We're in Western Cumbria, just outside the Lake District, uh, an area known for its outstanding natural beauty. However, in 1957, something happened here which could have rendered this entire place uninhabitable forever. On the 7th of October, 1957, a fire broke out at the Windscale nuclear facility. Only through the actions of a small number of staff was the disaster averted. The most anyone knew at the time was that milk supplies had to be destroyed within a 500 kilometre radius due to contamination from the radiation. However, estimates have put the number of fatalities of the Windscale disaster at around 240 cancer deaths. One of the legacies of the site, Windscale, was that it got renamed to Sellafield, a name that I certainly am all too familiar with. It was just sort of part of my childhood growing up in the UK. There were protests by the likes of Greenpeace, U2, bizarrely, about discharges of radioactive water into the sea. The site has been dogged by controversy over the years where it has been fined for leakages of radioactive materials. Despite all this, the government have always assured that Sellafield and the area around Sellafield is completely safe. We've decided to test that for ourselves. We'll see how safe the area is. We're currently about five, five to six miles away from it. However, I'll just read this. This is from Cumbrians opposed to a nuclear environment. Who could foresee that this playground for yesterday's children would harbour an invisible danger? The water we drink, the food we eat, along with the very air we breathe, now all bear the hallmark of man-made nuclear pollution. The fabric of Cumbria that has sustained all forms of life for so long is now tainted. Birds, animals, plants and marine life, along with people, all have to live within this changed environment. Like our own generations yet to come, they depend upon us to safeguard their future. Double exclamation mark. It's serious. The thing is, it's very hard to know the truth about Sellafield and very hard to know the truth about Windscale because of the forces protecting what goes on at the site. Because a big part of Sellafield Limited, the company which now runs the Sellafield site, huge amount of their budget is put towards public relations. Tracy West, I work for Sellafield Limited and I'm part of the social impact team. And we're here today to give a donation to Crab Fair. The Crab Fair was, was founded in 1267. The World Gurning Championships are part of the event. But what makes it really scary is that the work that is being done at Sellafield isn't to generate power, it isn't to make plutonium for weapons like it, it was originally set out to be. What's really scary is that the work that's done there is purely to try and make the site safe. That's all the Sellafield Limited does now. That's all that the Sellafield site is there for, is to decommission itself. Because it's so radioactive, it's, it's apparently the most toxic and radioactive place in Western Europe. Oh, it's not on the same scale as Chernobyl. It could have been. This, the, the, the Lake District, Cumbria, could have been made uninhabitable. We bought a Geiger counter just to get a sort of background radiation reading. What was it at home? Zero, zero point ten? Um, no, zero, zero point eight. And then when I turned the microwave on or went near your laptop, it went up to nine, ten, eleven. Fuck hell. What is it? It's nine now, but it's suddenly shot up to 45. Zero, zero point forty five. Why did um, it go up to 45? The average rate here right now is 0, 0, 0.16 since we've turned it on. It's climbing up again. It's, it's up to 0, 0, 0.16, 15. 
Did you actually say that they were putting radioactive waste into the sea? The sea. I don't know if they still do it, but they have been. I mean, there was a case. How a few is that years legal, ago. though? There was a case a few years ago where there were some leaks because they got fined. The company got fined massively. How it is it on, legal to it put? How is it legal to put radioactive waste into the sea? In, this is their because it will just build up over time. They claim it's safe amounts. Are you filming me coming down here because you hope that I slip? No, because you'd fall on me if you slipped. Is that a rock or a bag? Um, I think it's a bag. Let's hope there's not a dead body in it. All right, I'm testing the water. Jesus Christ. Right, it immediately jumped to 16 there. 16? Yeah. All right, well, that's not that high. No, but it's staying on 16. 40, 40. It jumped to 40 again. Creepy. Did you see that? And then went down to 16. 12. Why does it keep going up to 40? Interesting. Because moss, moss tends to be quite radioactive because it's like a sponge for radiation. Yeah. And I put it on the moss on there and it did jump up. To what? Only to like 14, 15, but it bit on 0.9. Let's go do some auditing. We're not auditing, we're not. Well, I didn't even know what that was until we did the video when we went to the MOD sites in Wheelshire. I didn't even know what that was. Didn't know it was a thing. And then someone said, oh, we're turning into an auditing channel. Well, I, didn't, I don't know what it is. What is auditing? It's going and filming like police and army and stuff. Oh. To exercise your free speech. Oh my God, I had no idea either. Yeah. Do your own research, everyone. <laughs> I should have done. Point eight. Moved away from there now, it's gone down. Wind scale was built after the Second World War. Basically what happened after the Second World War, the Americans basically went, we're not going to share any more of our nuclear secrets with you, Britain. And Britain went like, what? I thought we were mates. They went, well, you know, if America haven't got our back and you've got Russia, or the Soviet Union as it was then, and America stopped buying nuclear weapons and got a nuclear program. Well, we, you know, we, bear in mind, Britain still had that whole imperial mindset back then where they still thought, oh, we need to be important. So Britain started up its own nuclear program and Windscale, the old munitions factory in Cumbria, was chosen as the site. And it was chosen as the site basically to produce plutonium for nuclear weapons. That's what it was for. for. Actual, actually for weapons. Yeah, that's what it was for. Britain fires its first H-bomb to join the United States and Russia as ranking atomic powers. The thermonuclear device was fired high over its target in the Christmas Islands, keeping fallout at a minimum. Britain has staked its claim to full status as a nuclear world power Perhaps none too soon. They considered using water to put the fire out, but that could have caused a chemical reaction which would have caused literally a Chernobyl-style explosion. No way. Then they tried turning on the fans mm -hmm. to try and blow it out, basically. Oh.
Was he okay? He received like apparently an enormous dose of radiation and lived till till ninety. What? Yeah, I know. But what what happened? The government bastards basically blamed the workers on the site for the disaster rather than the fact that it was early days of nuclear power. They were rushing. They didn't really know what they were doing. Yeah, you know, and the, the, the government blamed worker error rather than sort of the inherent dangers mm. of, of nuclear power. Yeah. Yeah, they saved Cumbria. They saved basically Britain's um, Britain's n- economy. They saved like, you know... Not just Cumbria. I mean, if, if that country. ended up being a nuclear disaster the size of Chernobyl, they saved the whole country and nearby countries, frankly. There were pockets of leukemia in, in the countryside around, you know, in children, thyroid cancers. You just get this vibe. They lied to us once about wind scale. And you just got to wonder what else has been covered up. I mean, there's things mm. like these, basically, because the site is now, it, it, you know, it's never going to be fully clean. You know, the current decommissioning process to get basically the, the wreckage of the fire out of pile one and put it into basically glass and then put it under water. That's only temporary because then they've got to find a permanent place for it. Sellafield was also basically the world's nuclear dumping ground because it was like, oh, what's their thing? Oh, dealing with nuclear waste. Basically, other countries would send their waste to... How does a country send nuclear waste? By boat and then train. Imagine being imagine being the staff on that boat or train. There was um, an incident where a radioactive waste from a hospital, which they used for treating cancer patients, was trans- being transported to... Um, <laughs> uh, to Sellafield mm. for disposal and it hadn't been secured properly and basically there was a hole no. and they said there was a basically a beam of radiation coming out of it that was was basically if anyone had crossed or that beam had crossed through anyone while it was being transported by train and truck um, anyone had crossed through it it would have killed them Like, how do they dispose of it? So, they put it in... It's a, there's a whole process where they have to break it down into sort of different component parts.
moment, a lot of it is being stored in these what are called ponds. Because water, they're put underneath the ponds, which have a cooling effect, but water also, every sort of six inches of water, halves the amount of radiation that escapes. Nonetheless, that water, some of those ponds have leaked in the past. How deep are the ponds? I don't know. Um, they, I mean, hopefully very, hopefully very, very deep. deep. Another part of the problem is it's still radioactive, that water. But I don't, I can't wrap my head around this. These ponds aren't covered, right? They're open to the elements. And the what? There's no lid on these ponds. You can see, if you go onto Google Maps, those are the ponds. And so the water is just open to the element. It can evaporate. It can get drunk yes. by birds. Well, this is, this is, this is the other thing I was trying to say is that birds end up sitting on top of the water. And so, Sellafield has had to employ snipers. This is not a joke. Snipers to basically shoot the birds, which are then so radioactive that then they, they've got... Basically, Sellafield has a freezer full of dead radioactive seagulls. Ah! Why can't birds. they cover these I don't ponds. get it. I don't know. But, but yeah. No, maybe it's a scientific reason that like if they're covered... Maybe they, builds up. The pressure builds up or something. But surely it's there insane. must be a way around it that you can stop birds sitting on top of that water yeah and then having to kill innocent birds innocent birds they well it's not their fault they just want to sit we're just, down we're just innocent birds <laughs> we're just, we're just normal, normal birds, birds. <laughs> towards the main gate um, obviously apologies for the uh, dash cam footage but there's not a lot we can do about that um, we've already seen it from a distance haven't we you can see the old reactor that's now shut down and decommissioned the Geiger counter is now steady at 14 it had jumped up okay. to 16 a minute ago just to put it into context as we were leaving our previous location it was around like, let's say maximum 10, but more around yeah, eight or nine. There it is to the left of us. Oh, wow. We are on public land. You can feel, you might get questioned. So to the left of us right now is the reactor. Jesus, that's terrifying. So to the left of the uh, big dome, that's pile one, which is in the process of being, the chimney being decommissioned, and taken down. That's terrifying. That's absolutely terrifying. My God, I actually got, got butterflies in my guts. Again? <laughs> uh, so when we come to these guys, this is Sellafield. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, this is sort of, in my head, it's kind of mythic. Um, so many pipes everywhere. Yeah. I really hope there's a roundabout down here I can turn around. <laughs> Not just end up inside the bloody plant. It's just concrete and pipes and barbed wire. I mean, no one's getting in there. They've got oh, shit. two... Oh, gosh. Uh, we sort of need to turn around, don't we? Uh, Commercial vehicles and buses only. I wonder if we can So turn many around. workers here. I've got to turn around. Yeah, I don't really want to go any further. So many workers. Oh, it's a... I didn't realise it had... It was that populated so up ahead you'll see it the, the the reactor that's the reactor that dates back to the 50s the big round dome that's well, not even a dome it's a sphere um, yeah that's the reactor and then the chimney to the right it's the uh, that's pile one that's that's basically the most radioactive place or one of the most radioactive places on earth I have to say, the Geiger counter didn't really go up yeah, that high. Yeah, I'm reassured so far. It, it didn't go, it, it was higher than it was in the town we were in previously, which was about 
10 minutes drive away from Sellafield. It's a, a legacy of the Cold War. It's a legacy of, of not only this country, but the world's hunger for sort of nuclear weapons. And now Sellafield is sort of in a way damned if they do and damned if they don't, because they've got to make it safe. It can't just be left. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what do you do with that stuff? It is there now. What, you know, so you've got to deal with it. So, you know, I get that the task they're facing is, is gargantuan and monumental, but new, uh, was it British Nuclear Fuels or British, whoever used to run it, famously, it was run really badly. How much radiation has been released over the years in addition to that sort of initial fire? The thought of the Lake District being turned into some sort of nuclear wasteland or, or being polluted with radiation, it's just, I, it's too much. Like, I can't handle that. That's too sad. I'm glad it didn't happen. Yeah. And I hope it never does because that's just, yeah, it I, would be such a shame. I guess the argument is it's getting safer all the time. We hope. We hope. Um... But look, look what's happened to big chunks of the world as a result. You know, you just, you don't get to clean it up. You know, it doesn't, you just have to wait. That's what a lot of what's going on at Sellafield is, is they're waiting for the material to stop being quite so radioactive. Mm. So it's easier to sort of deal with. Or maybe for science to catch up with them so they can find better ways to make it safer. Yeah, I think there is a degree of sort of just wait see but the thing that sort of sticks with me is the cover-up yeah i mean you it know, kind the... of makes you wonder what else is being covered up or has been covered up it's the lies that the government told and this is why you know again i've said it before i'm not a conspiracy guy but you know we we, we have on the record points when the government have lied to us you know, as a, as a nation and other governments have lied. And it's like in a relationship, isn't it? You know, if your partner lies to you enough times, you mm -hmm. start to stop trusting them. And we often dismiss, oh, conspiracy theory people as um, loons and all the rest of it. But also sometimes you kind of think, well, their, their fears are, are valid because their fears come from having been lied to repeatedly. So since doing this sort of series, you know, I've I'm not I'm not in the process of getting red pilled, but I have read a lot of stuff. Where I've kind of feel, well, you know, I've been left with this sort of feeling of, I don't know, who are they? To who are they? They being the government. They being the government, but governments, plural, and um, oops. Well, we're heading towards Nethertown. And St. Bees, patron saint of wasps. Yeah, and, and they, they being the people in charge, it, it sort of feels like the rest of us are... I don't know, it just sort of... Like, like we're not irrelevant, but... I don't know, why should people get to make such huge decisions about our lives? We hand over so much of our own individual power to big, faceless bureau you know, bureaucracies and, and organisations that often don't have our best interests at heart. You know, often in the case of, for instance, you, you know, companies like the one at Sellafield, admittedly, all right, they're, they're, they're owned by the government but they still got targets to meet. They still got budgets to work with it. You know, you start to sort of see a pattern of terrible decisions either made for money or power, but rarely for the greater good. And it's, it sucks.
beach. Yeah, not an eel beach. This is Drig. Uh, it's a special conservation area. Um, well, okay, it's coming up. Uh, just to the north here, not very far. I mean, what was it? A three minute drive from the Drig, uh, I think it's called repository area. Basically, it's a long-term storage facility for nuclear waste right here in this special conservation area it covers 270 acres uh, and it's it's full of concrete vaults wow. full of waste not only from Sellafield but from other Mil ministry of defense sites around the country other uh, other power plants um, and all they can do is bury it So if you put the Geiger counter closer to the ground, is it any... We're at 0.10 at the moment. That's, yeah, that's kind of what it's been. So, I mean, you know, look. There it is. It's not going up any. No, and it, it hasn't... Yeah, there was a point that it was on, like, 16. Yeah. Um, and that was just in a random town. We had that weird burst of 40 and 45 when we were by the river. But that was just like for what a second. Yeah. Isn't that odd? Stinks. No. No, it's lower. Zero point eight. Oh. Zero point zero eight. just see Sellafield there in the distance you can actually see the top of pile one where the, uh, where the fire happened in 1957 just over here aside from the fact you've got the Lake District mountains in the background you have got the nuclear repository site not suppository you wouldn't want one of them I mean we've tested it it's the same you know we're on 13 at the moment it went up to 16 when i first came up here i've tried it on the ground i mean i think it's fair to say at least unless that's not a very good or sensitive geiger counter cost a bloody fortune oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> cost quite a lot of money i mean yeah we're not look we're like we're laymen and women lay, lay women lay people lay miserable lay folk um we're lay folk that's us so, you know, yeah, we don't really know what we're doing. It's not very scientific. We're not scientists. We're idiots, generally. But it's not about the radiation that's here now. It's the radiation that's over there and there that is there. You know, how safe ultimately is it? You know, we know it wasn't safe in the past. You know, the Sellafield has a legacy of 60 years worth of... of poor safety. It's still scary just to look at it over there and also think that in that alternate universe where the fire didn't get extinguished and there was an explosion, mm. this whole area would be so different. The whole country, the whole world would be different. You know, to have an entire swathe of England, we're not even a big country. We're a small country, but to have, you know, a chunk of it, just a no-go area. Makes me feel small. <laughs> Makes <a> change. <laughs> At first, that's why I came here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it does, it makes me feel small. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to connect what we're seeing with what happened. And I know it's affecting you emotionally and you say that you feel really small, but I think in 
in light of it but i think because it's not a nuclear wasteland it's not chernobyl it hasn't been abandoned it doesn't look post-apocalyptic uh okay sellafield did look odd and it was kind of oddly industrial and but it's kind of it could also have just been a factory had i part of this huge globe that was well had i not known i would never have guessed Mm. and so also because the geiger counter isn't slowly climbing or or rapidly climbing i i'm finding it i'm just i'm just finding it hard to connect with the reality of what what it is and even what though we passed here. those signs saying nuclear restricted site yeah it's weird it just like it goes in like i get it mentally but it's not affecting me emotionally for some reason maybe it's like i'm busting for a week she needs a wee so we're probably going to wrap up this video <laughs> maybe it's wee, that that's we, all i we can both do. need a maslow's wee. hierarchy of needs first <laughs> first i need to find a loo and then right. Uh, let's go for a wee. Uh, on that note, everyone, thank you for watching this detour to Sellafield, one of the world's most radioactive sites, except not in the countryside surrounding it. Imagine if I looked at it then and it was like... And it was like thousand, 101. A thousand micro then, an hour. Then I'd start freaking uh, out. Yeah, so we're going to go for a wee. Why don't you subscribe, like, all that stuff that YouTubers say. All that cool non-radioactive stuff. 75% of you or thereabouts do not subscribe, even though you watch our videos regularly. So that'd be lovely if you did. Uh, And you can support us on Patreon to fund more of these Explorations into the world. And allow us to buy a portable toilet. (laughs) What a shot. We look like that. Look at that. It looks like an album cover. Called Reframe. Reframe.